Evelyn, clear by Wood, Stan Grove, Song Wood Turner, page 333. Evelyn, page 333.
uh, for those who aren't here, uh, for whatever reason, they will be posted to our YouTube channel. Uh, the Lord willing, we will be posting the link uh, either this evening or first thing in the morning. Uh, and so if you choose to go back and watch it or you know somebody who's not here, uh, if you want to let them know, they can go to our Landmark Baptist Church YouTube channel and uh, catch all the services uh, on, you know, on the video. And so, uh, please remember that. And so, please, if you're if you're around the camera, please be mindful that it is sensitive. And uh, so, I don't want you to say something, all right? And uh, just being honest. And uh, we're back there talking about turkey hunting or something. Or why church is going on, okay? So, please be mindful of that. That it is on. We turned the light off because we didn't want to uh, blind people while we were uh, recording, and uh, I don't think it's necessary uh, to use the light this morning, and uh, so, but we'll probably have the light on on Wednesday night. So, anyway, uh, everything will be online, all right? Now, uh, this morning, we're going to have some singing, and uh, Miss Nicole, you and Miss Jessica and Miss Samantha, if y'all would, y'all come, and uh, they're going to they're gonna sing a few for you, and uh, we'll see what happens, all right? And uh, sure is good to be back in church. Amen. 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 Listen, I, I understand you watch stuff online, all that's wonderful, but the difference is that's like talking to your wife on the phone or to taking her out on, on the town for a day. It's right. a vast difference. That's it right. just ain't the same, man. And uh, I'm thankful for the technology. Thank God for it. Uh, but it ain't the same as gathering with the saints. And so we're grateful and thankful this morning to be here and uh, looking forward uh, to what the Lord has for us. So you pray for these young ladies as they say, and uh, we'll see what the Lord's got for us. All right. Y'all ready? Amen. <laughs>
appreciate the Lord sending that sweet spirit and uh, giving us, uh, just allowing us to feel something. I don't like going to church, don't feel nothing. I know you don't go by what you feel. Right. I know that. But it sure is nice to feel what you're going on. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I appreciate the Holy Ghost. And uh, His heavenly over there. And uh, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. and Amen. May I say this? I appreciate singers that know the Holy Ghost. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of them that don't. Right. And uh, I certainly appreciate those that do. Uh, this morning, the Lord's not so much interested in your talent as He is the touch of God that rests on you. And uh, I appreciate that. Uh, this morning, I want you to take your Bible, turn to the book of Job. The book of Job. <laughs> Uh, chapter number five. Job chapter number five. I want you to get Job five with one hand, and I want you to get Job 14 with the other hand. Job five, and then Job chapter number 14. And uh, we'll read a verse in Job five and read one in Job 14. Try to give you the message the Lord gave us. The book of Job, chapter number 5. If you would, look at verse number 7. Job 5, verse number 7. Yet man is born unto trouble, as the sparks fly upward. Now, Job chapter number 14. Look, at, look over at Job 14. Look at verse number 1. Man that is born of a woman. That covers every man on the planet. Yes, sir. Amen. There ain't a man here wasn't born of a woman. Right. Ain't, ain't a man nowhere that wasn't born of a woman. Verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Let's pray. Father, we certainly love you. We're grateful for the opportunity to gather. Lord, our prayer is that the message would be a help and a blessing, a benefit. Lord, we pray the Spirit of God would anoint and do in power. Give us that which we need. Lord, just as important, we pray you'd speak to the heart of the listener. Pray you'd encourage, help, bless, settle, speak to, move on, deal with, change, convict. Lord, whatever's needed, I pray, Father, that the Word of God would accomplish it. And, Father, I pray you'd take something in the message and you'd use it. Uh, drive it down in the hearts of your people. That would be a help and a benefit in days to come. And Father, whatever you do for us, we'll be careful to thank you and praise you. Give you honor and give you great glory. Amen. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Here in the book of Job, the Bible reveals a great truth to us. That problems are a part of this life. Right. Now, if anyone was familiar with this great truth, it was Job. Uh, trouble, right. problems, and sorrow are the theme of this book that bears his name. Every person alive today, if you're older than 10 or 12 years old, uh, is familiar with difficulty. If you're drawing God's air, you know what it is to suffer and to uh, experience affliction. Right. You have been acquainted with problems. Uh, this life is filled with them. Uh, the, I, I, I'm not talking about our currency, right? I don't, I don't care about that. I'm talking about, generally speaking, life is filled with problems. Uh, now, you'll find that this theme of man having to suffer trouble uh, is repeated throughout the Scripture. You'll realize that when God wrote his book, he never once sugarcoats anything. Amen. He never once tries to uh, uh, gloss over or ignore uh, the facts of this life. And one of those great facts of this life is this, that problems are going to abound. You're going to have difficulties. You're going to have struggles. You're going to uh, deal with a broken heart and tears. and struggle. That is just a part of this life. There is no one, no one, no one on the planet that is exempt uh, from problems and burdens and sorrow. It is just a part of this life. Now, uh, you'll find again, this is repeated throughout the scripture. In John chapter number 16, verse number 33, Jesus himself, the Savior, the Redeemer, God in the flesh, said this, In the world ye shall have tribulation. 
But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Uh, problems and sorrows are, are part and parcel of this life. Now, this morning, there's several reasons why we have trouble. Number one, we live in a sin-cursed world. Amen. When Adam and Eve goofed it up, disobeyed God, the curse of sin fell on the planet. And when it did, it ruined everything that it touched. Right. And because you live in a sin-cursed world, and because of, of, of the, the, the fallen state of the world we live in, uh, the result is this. Problems and burdens and sorrows and heartaches and frustrations and difficulties. Uh, you live in a sin-cursed world. Uh, it has ruined everything that it's touched from the planet itself right down to you and me. The second reason you're going to have problems and difficulties and sorrows, number two, is because there is a real devil. Right. The devil hates the believer and does his best by sending opposition into our lives. We will fight discouragement. Uh, he will try to hinder and frustrate us with problems. Uh, and we will have to contend with that sorry, no good. Can I stop and say this? I hate the devil. Amen. Uh, listen, brother, that is a fact. It'll be a glad day in my life when Jesus comes and rescues us and redeems us and calls us out of this sin sick world and carries us home. But one of the many of all, I mean, there's a ton of benefits, uh, but one benefit is we will never have to fight the sorry devil ever again. We will never have to put up with him uh, tormenting us and uh, 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 trying to hinder us. Uh, listen, what a blessing it'll be. But until that day, the believer has a real enemy called the devil. Right. Sin curse world. Because there's a real devil. Number three, there are times when God sends problems. Right. <coughs> that is a fact. Amen. God sends those problems to purify and mold us and shape us into people that he can use for his honor. That's and for his glory. Yep. And just because you're saved, and just because you've been redeemed, don't mean we're always right. right. It doesn't mean we always look at things the way God wants right. us to. It doesn't mean we always have the right spirit and the right attitude concerning right. things. And sometimes God sends problems to our lives uh, to instruct us and to change us and to mold us and to make us better and try to align our thinking with his thinking. Right. He's trying to make us more like Jesus. And so there's times when God's going to send problems into your life and allow you to struggle and allow you to suffer to make you better for the glory and for the honor of God. Amen. And the fourth reason you're, you're going to suffer in this life is the sinfulness of your own flesh. Yeah. Because of our fallen nature, we bring many sorrows upon ourselves. Bad decisions. Foolish mistakes, our own sinful desires, uh, they account for a multitude of our trouble. Mm, and brother, listen, sometimes the devil don't even have to mess with us. If he leaves us alone long enough, we'll foul ourselves up. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to get on this, dear God, we'd be here all day. But how many of y'all have ever made a stupid, foolish decision? Amen. How many have made more than one? I'm just saying, brother, sometimes the reason we suffer is because we're stupid. Amen. We, don't, we don't always make the right choices. We don't always do the right thing. We don't always follow the advice and the word, the commandments given in the word of God. And sometimes we bring suffering upon ourselves because of our own sinfulness, our own flesh, right. uh, our inability to discern and, and do the things that God wants us to do. Now, this morning, there are, there are three basic types of problems you're going to suffer in this life. Number one, you're going to suffer physical problems, sickness, disease, infirmity, things going wrong in this body. This body has been tainted by the curse of sin, and as a result, we will suffer in this flesh. Diabetes, cancer, heart disease, just to list a few. I mean, brother, especially as we get, we get older, we face these things with more regularity. Uh, this morning, I can remember what it was like to be 20. I can remember, uh, listen, uh, not having a, 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 an ounce of physical problems. I remember, Brother Timmy, I could sleep on a rock. 
And uh, listen, man, sleep like a baby. Sleep 8, 10, 12 hours, man, and wake up feeling refreshed and good. Mm, but there's a lot of difference. Hear me, if you're in this room today and you're between... Uh, if you're under the age of 35, you, know, you ought to shout and rejoice, and you ought to enjoy the good health that you have today. Uh, but I have learned a great truth as I have gotten older. Uh, those days are a distant memory. Uh, listen, uh, I mean, brother, listen, I remember when I slept through the night, I didn't have to get up and go to the bathroom. Right. Here my am, son. <laughs> Them days is over. Middle of the night. I remember when I woke up and nothing hurt. Right, yeah. mm, but now oh, you sleep wrong, you're sore for three days. Right. Mm, my point is this body over time breaks down and it gets worse and worse and worse. Can I say this? And some of y'all don't believe this, but I remember a day when I had a head full of hair. Right. <laughs> a mop. So y'all don't believe it? See me after service? I got pictures. I used to have a head full of hair. My point is, as we age, problems and burdens physically are going to come our way. That's right. You're going to face physical difficulties. Can I be honest? Your hot water heater is going to break yep. at some point. Your floor is going to get flooded. It's going to cost you a fortune to clean it up. Yep. Can I be honest, Brother Timmy? Your septic tank is going to have to be dealt with. You are not exempt from physical problems in this life. Right. Listen, unfortunately, sometimes houses burn down. Uh, cars get wrecked. Uh, cars break down. Uh, I mean, brother, tires go flat. Uh, you're going to face physical difficulties. Just uh, financial trouble, work trouble. Uh, I mean, stuff that ain't got nothing to do with spiritual uh, issues. I'm talking about just physical problems. Even lost people suffer from the same afflictions in this regard that you and I suffer from. You're going to face physical problems, number two. Uh, you're going to face spiritual problems. Can I be honest? That includes sin and being backslid. Yeah. I do not know a believer. Not one. And I know a thousand across the country. And over the last 20, almost 25 years, I've met tons of people. I have never met one. Not one. Your favorite preacher, if it ain't me, and, and, and dear God, if it ain't, I don't blame you. <laughs> but my point is this. Uh, regardless of who they are, regardless of how spiritual they are, I've never met one believer at one point or another didn't get back right. That's right. I didn't say that when I got drunk and robbed a bank. I think what I'm saying. But at some point or another, every one of us have grown weary and have grown cold and have grown indifferent to the things of God. Yeah. Every one of us. You are going to battle spiritual uh, problems. There's times you're going to get discouraged because the Lord didn't hear and answer your prayer. There's going to be times you're going to get frustrated because God didn't do the, do the thing the way you wanted him to do it. There's going to be times where you're going to fight and struggle with this flesh, spiritually speaking. Uh, there's going to be times uh, where you're going to have to battle just to try to stay faithful to God and stay faithful to the book and stay faithful to the Christian life and to respond spiritually uh, when you do have problems. Uh, uh, listen, brother, there's times where you're going to struggle with finding and knowing the will of God. Uh, you're going to fight uh, 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 all these issues spiritually. There's going to be times when you're going to grow weary because you haven't felt the presence of God. You've prayed, you've read your Bible, you've done right, but yet it seems like God ain't within a meeting. Hey, am I preaching the right yeah. crowd this yeah. morning? Have yeah. y'all ever had that? Don't act spiritual. Let's just be honest. There are times when spiritual problems abound in our life. There's times when physically everything's going great and, and, and the bills are paid and, and, and nothing's broke down and there's money in the bank and, and, and uh, physically I'm doing good. And when I'm doing good physically, it seems like there's times where I'm going to struggle spiritually. And, 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 and it seems like I can't find God and, and, and I don't know where the Lord is and, and, and God's not answering my prayer. I mean, brother, there's times I wish you ain't struggling physically, you'll struggle you'll struggle spiritually. There's times when spiritually everything's going great in my life. I mean the Lord's real. The Lord's blessing. I can feel His presence. He's answering my prayers. The church is doing good. Uh, the crowd is up. The offerings are up. And I say hallelujah. But then physically something will happen. Mm, listen, there's times where you're going to have to fight the force of, all the forces of hell that's trying to derail you. And seek you to stop living for God. Amen. Number three. These are three general areas. This does not cover everything, obviously. I ain't got time to get into every area. 
But you're going to have physical problems. You're going to have spiritual problems. But number three, you're going to have people problems. Disagreements, arguments, and falling out with others. That includes church splits, people talking about you, marriage trouble, problems with your children. And brother, hear me. Uh, anytime you're dealing with people, you're going to have problems. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Right. Everybody ain't going to get along all the time. Right. Everybody ain't going to see everything the same way. Everybody ain't always going to uh, 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 do things the way you think they ought to do. And can I be honest, if you've been married longer than 45 minutes, an hour, you've probably had a disagreement. Right. See, y'all acting spiritual. Y'all oh, yeah. acting spiritual. Don't you, don't you sit there and tell me, me and my baby have never argued. Huh. Why, you lying rascal, I'm going to go ahead and give the invitation now. Yeah. Yeah. The only way to avoid arguments and disagreements is if one of you is dead. Right. Amen. It will happen. Why do you think we counsel young couples before we marry them? Because in their minds, before right. they get married, they think, oh, yeah. it's just going to be so wonderful. Right. It's going to be wonderful all the time. Yeah. He is my Prince Charming. <laughs> She is the light of my life. Until you put them in the same house and let them live together. Amen. Then all of a sudden, Prince Charming, he ain't. All of a sudden, you know, she's not the light of your life. Doesn't mean you don't love them. Don't mean that you're, you're ready to bail out. It simply means that because people are people and they are imperfect in their nature, none of us, none of us, have uh, uh, are perfect. All of us got issues, right. problems. Uh, all of us got. Uh, uh, listen, some of you ladies are, are scared to nod your head, but listen, yeah, listen. Right. None of us are perfect. Right. And because you take two imperfect people and put them together, they's bound to be problems. Right. You put. You, listen, you gather a crowd this side, they's bound to be problems. There's going to be times there's disagreements, arguments. Listen, brother, if the devil can't get you physically. And if the devil can't hinder you spiritually, all he's got to do is send somebody by your way uh, to say or do something that hinders you and frustrates you or deals with you in such a fashion uh, that it will try to uh, uh, stop you from living for God. And those are the three general areas where you're going to have problems. Uh, that is not every area. Uh, but may I say this, regardless of what kind of problem you have, the answer is always the same. It is not in a program, and it's not in a possession. The answer is found in a person, and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, listen, brother, he is the, you say, I'm struggling physically. Jesus is the answer. Right. You say, I'm struggling spiritually. Then Jesus is still the answer. Right. You say, I'm having people problems. Then Jesus is still the answer regardless of whatever problem you're facing. When I first got saved, I went to church at New Man Baptist Church. Great big church. You've heard me talk about it. I mean, thousands of people sitting there. And uh, a, they had a big, huge banner across the platform. Auditorium was 10,000 square feet. And uh, big old balcony. And brother, across the, the back of the auditorium, some of y'all have been there know this. It said this. Jesus is the answer. The letters were about that big. Jesus is the answer. You say you don't even know the problem. No, I don't have to know the problem because I know the answer. Right. Jesus is the answer for whatever you're facing today. That is a fact. Now, now I said all that by way of introduction. But I want to give you another truth, and this is the message. There is another great truth that concerns problems in this life. Many times... It is not the problem that's the problem. Right. right. Many times it is not the problem that causes us the most grief. Right. That's right. It's not the problem itself that does the most damage in our lives. Many times it is our reaction right. to the problem right. that does the most damage. Yeah. How we handle the problem is where the problem is. This morning I want to preach on this thought. The problem 
with problems. The problem with problems. It amazes me, even in my own life, every time something tears up, we're surprised. Right. Have we not lived long enough to realize that problems are a part of this life? Right. Has the scripture not backed up this great truth? Have we not read it? Have we not heard it preached? Have we not dealt with it over and over and over? But yet every time a problem comes, it surprises us and shocks us that we've had another problem. I don't know about you. I just know me. Have you ever made plans and had it all worked out up here? Yeah. Yeah. Many times. And then you think, well, I'll do this, and then this will happen, and then that will happen. Right. And you don't get two steps into your into your plan, and it gets blown all to pieces. Right. The old saying is, you want to hear God laugh? Tell him your plans. Right. There's a great truth in that. Problems are, 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 are a fact of life. That is not the issue. The problem with problems is how we respond to our problems. The first problem you're going to face when you have a problem. Let me give them to you. Number one. The first problem uh, you're going to face when you have problems is the problem of panic. When something goes on in our lives, when something out of the ordinary happens, when an issue pops up, a problem happens, regardless of whether it be spiritual, physical, or, or, or uh, people problem, our first response is always to panic. You have got to learn that, that you can not panic. We think the world is coming to an end when we have a problem. And we think we have to fix that thing immediately. And you know what happens? We end up making a bigger mess out of the problem because of our response to the problem than we would have had we just sat down, relaxed, and not panicked. A lot of times you'll panic and you'll create more issues to deal with than the original problem brought, brought in your life to begin with. Amen, right. And God may have allowed that problem. Uh, he certainly did. And God may have uh, sent the problem. Uh, it might be the devil. It might be some other, uh, uh, just because you live in a sin cursed world. But what happens is when we have a problem, if we're not careful, we panic because of that problem. And we add more grief, sorrow, and turmoil in our lives than is meant to be there. And we put ourselves in a mess trying to panic because we get so bent out of shape and so uh, twisted up and we begin to panic and we think, oh, we got we to do something. No, you don't. Right. Right. Don't panic, man, when problems come your way. Relax and think and pray before you respond in any fashion to any problem. Right. Right. Amen. Don't panic. Relax. Think before you go off half cocked and make things worse. Right. When we what happens is we face a problem. We think, I know what to do. And we begin to uh, 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 try to enact a plan that may not be the will of God. Yeah. Can I be honest? The reason I can preach this this morning is because I am guilty of everything I'm fixing. Yes, sir. Right. I have had problems and, try and panicked and thought, I've got to fix it right now. And, and I responded quickly and then had to look back and think, man, I wish I hadn't done that. That just made things worse. Right. Don't panic. Listen, relax. You say, I got a problem. I know, I know. Relax. Don't panic. Don't do something, uh, don't do something eternally stupid right. because you have a temporary problem. Right. Bob Jones Sr. said this, never sacrifice uh, uh, the immediate uh, never sacrifice the eternal on the altar of the immediate. <clears throat> Great truth. Hear me this morning. Do not panic. Amen. Calm down. Relax. Go pray. And we say, well, I got to get it fixed today. Who told you that? Right. Who told you your problem had to be fixed today? I understand there are some issues that, that require immediate attention, but not all of them our first response is to panic and say, I gotta do this, I gotta fix it. No, you don't. Hear me, brother, we are the world's worst to react yeah. instead of going to pray and taking our time and thinking it out logically. You know what else happens? We get mad. 
Now I know that ain't talk. I know y'all don't. But can, I, can I preach to me for a little bit? Uh, you know, I know y'all far, far more spiritual than I am. But you ever get mad when a problem shows up? Amen. And do something because you're angry. Yeah. And brother, before you know it, you think, Lord, have mercy. Now I got two problems. Right, right. Can I be honest? Just several weeks ago, my wife and I were in a car wreck. We pulled up stop sign. We didn't do anything wrong. And some nut come up behind us, brother Timmy, and rear-ended us. Matter of fact, our car's in the shop now. Uh, we're waiting to get it back. And uh, so, listen, that guy rear-ended us. My first instinct, my first instinct, because I'm human, I want to jump out of the car and have a word of prayer with that person. <laughs> My first instinct was to lay hands on him. That was, let's put it that way. But by the time I got my foot, I opened the car door and put my foot on the ground, the Holy Ghost said, you better calm down. Right. Yes, so I did. I walked back there, tried to talk to him, and he took off, man. He, he bailed out. Hear me. Listen, if, if, you, if you're in that situation and your first response is to get angry, now you go over there and slap somebody, now you got to go to jail. Still got to fix your car. Right. That didn't change a thing. Right. Now, you know what you've done? Now you got two problems. Right. Instead of just dealing with the car, now you got to deal with the song battery. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of paying just your deductible for insurance, now you got to pay the bail money to get out of jail, worry about your testimony, and you got to get right with the Lord. Right. But because we respond in anger and get offended and get upset, we lash out and we create more difficulties for ourselves than was necessary if we'd have just relaxed and calmed down. Listen, young couples are, are the world's typically the world's worst. If you've been married any length of time, you, you've learned to kind of bypass this. But even young couples, they think every problem is the end of the world. We've had an argument, preacher. Oh my God. I've got phone calls. Some young lady crying, falling, preacher, pray for me. I said, my God, what happened? Somebody died? No, we had an argument. I said, with, with who? With my husband. I said, okay, what happened? He, I made uh, tuna casserole and he didn't like it. And, and I said, it offended me because he didn't appreciate me. And preacher, my marriage is over. No, honey, listen, listen. It's just tuna casserole. Right. Calm down and relax. Can I be honest? We are the most dramatic crowd on the planet. Right. We get tore up, bent out of shape, fearful and afraid every time a problem comes. Instead of handling it uh, spiritually, instead of handling it like a, a mature Christian, you know what we do? We panic! Right. That's right. We create more problems. Yeah. Number one, don't panic. I can see already y'all struggling. You say, my God, preacher. <laughs> That's my, that's the way I handle everything. Don't panic. Right. Number two. It just gets worse. <laughs> Number two. Let me back up and say this. Proverbs 25, 28 says this. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that means? If you don't have any rule over your spirit, you know what that means? You have no walls. It's like a city with no walls. That means the enemy can come in. And listen, if the devil can't mess you up with the problem, he'll mess you up with your response to the problem. That's right. You have got to learn to rule your spirit. You say, but I got flesh. Yeah, so does everybody else. Yeah. Just because somebody else responds to the flesh doesn't mean you have to respond to the yeah. flesh. Amen. You can still keep your, your, your Christian character. You can still respond in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. I have not always done that. Yeah. God have mercy. You say illustrate not on your life. I ain't telling you nothing that's under the blood. But I, there's been times where I saw a problem and I thought, I gotta fix it, I gotta fix it, I gotta fix it, and I panicked and I made things worse. So listen, calm down. Jesus is on the throne. Everything's all right. Relax. Calm down. Go pray. Don't let your flesh get the better of you when you're facing difficulties, struggles, and problems. Right. Number one, don't pack. Number two.
Number two, the second problem you're going to have to deal with when dealing with problems, the second problem is patience. When we begin to suffer, we want that problem fixed immediately. Right. We do not like to wait for the Lord to fix it in his time. We find ourselves trying to help the Lord and doing things we'll regret later. Do not get in a hurry trying to get out from underneath the burden that God has allowed in your life. Yeah. The great preacher and theologian of years gone by, uh, Andrew Murray, said this. This is what he said while he was experiencing tribulation. In his times of trouble, he would say this. First of all, he brought me here. God brought me to this place. It's the Lord that put me exactly where I am. You may feel alone. You may feel uh, discontent. You may feel like you're about to die. But it is God that brought you there. He is the one who has allowed you to be in that place. He is the one who has brought you to that particular issue. God is the one. He said, first of all, he brought me here. It is by his will I am in this place. And in that, I will rest. Next, he will keep me here in his love and give me grace to behave as his child. Amen. Then he will make the trial a blessing, teaching me lessons he intends for me to learn Amen. and working in me the grace he means to bestow. Last, he would say, in his good time, he can bring me out again. Amen. How and when, he knows. Therefore, he said, I am here by God's appointment, by God's keeping, under God's training, for God's time. This trial is not forever, and it will end. The sun will shine again. Amen. That's good. I felt convicted when I read that. Right. Because we are in such a struggle to get out from underneath. We are so so desperate uh, to get out from underneath the burden. We are so uh, so uh, 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 so uncomfortable in, in particular situations. We will do anything to get out from underneath it. Until we realize it is God that brought us to that place. Right. It is the Lord who is trying to teach us something. It is the Lord who is trying to work and move in your <coughs> life through the burden. And instead of focusing on trying to find a way out, we ought to be focusing on the lesson he wishes for us to learn. Amen. I do not understand why God allows certain burdens on certain people, while others will never face that burden. Right. And But this crowd will face burdens that that crowd will never face. Right. But I know this, every burden is tailor-made by the Lord Amen. and has been rubber-stamped and went across his desk and got his approval long before it ever reached your life. Yeah. Now, knowing that, you ought to rest in the fact that it was God that allowed it to happen. It was the Lord who brought you to that place. It was the Lord who saw fit to and, and deemed it necessary for you to go through that particular trial. And while you are there, you ought to rest in the fact that God loves you and God's trying to teach you something. And when God gets ready, God will deliver, God will change, and God will bless again. May I say this? No trial is forever, but it is not up to you and I to decide when the trial is over. That is his business and his alone. And until he lifts the burden, we are to maintain our Christian dignity and character and prayer life and be patient while we wait upon the Lord to deliver us. Right. Amen. We get so impatient. Right. We get tired of struggling. Yeah. We get tired of praying. Yeah. We get tired of asking. But it is the Lord himself that brought you to that place. That's right. And if he has deemed it necessary for you to stay there a month, six months, a year, five years, then bless his name. He knows what's best. And we ought to reside and rest in his love and his care and the lessons that he's trying to teach us that will make us more like our Savior. Amen. 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 Be patient. Stop trying to fix everything to yourself. Don't panic, but have some patience. Relax. Yeah. Rest in the fact that God's trying to work and move in your life. Amen. Right. That's good. Don't panic. Have some patience. He knows precisely, exactly what to do. Here's what amazes me. 
when you compare it to the physical realm. If you get the flu, you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes antibiotics. You begin to eat those antibiotics. You do not expect those antibiotics to, to start to work in the next 10 minutes. You know what you understand? You know, yes, I've got a problem, but it's gonna take several days for the antibiotics to kick in, but eventually over four or five days, they will do their work and I will get back to being healthy. Right. We don't even, we don't panic. We don't lose our patience. You know what we say? It's going to take a few days. When you have surgery, you do not expect to be out running marathons right. as soon as surgery is over. Right. You understand that it's going to take some time for the wounds to heal and for everything to, the, the, the bones to knit together again. Right. You understand it's going to take time. <clears throat> the same is true spiritually. Listen, brother, the Lord's already gave you the prescription, and it's in, in that book. Amen. <coughs> He's already gave you the medication you need to take for your affliction. That is, a, that is to bow your head and pray, and that is to uh, stay faithful to the things of God. That is to read your Bible, and if you'll do those things, uh, it will take some time uh, for, the, for those things to accomplish their work in your life, and the Lord will use those things, and eventually you will get over whatever has a you, whatever problem you're facing, and you will be back on top. But it is not up to you to decide how quickly God pulls you out of your trial. That's right. Amen. That is not your business. Right. It is your job to stay faithful through the affliction, through the trial. I know this. If you get sick and they prescribe antibiotics and you don't take them, it's probably going to take you a lot longer to get over your issue. Right, right, right. The same is true spiritually. Right. If you refuse to take the medication that the Lord gave you, if you refuse to pray about it, you refuse to read your Bible, you refuse to do the things you know to do are right, all you're doing is prolonging your time in that affliction and, and you, are, you are prolonging your time uh, of suffering because uh, if you get mad at the Lord and you get angry with the Lord and you say, well, Lord, I don't think it's right and it ain't fair and I don't believe I deserve this and now you're angry at the Lord, go ahead and do that. Go ahead. All you're doing is prolonging your time of affliction because God will not Removes you from that affliction as long as your heart ain't right. right. That's right. He's going to wait till you get your heart right before he ever delivers you. So you go ahead and say, well, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be angry. And I'm going to rebel. And I'm not going to. Uh, I'm upset. And I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to uh, not read my Bible. Not pray. Well, hey, dummy, all you're doing is prolonging your agony. Right. Amen. That's right. Now, if you want to do that, that's your business. But I'll be honest, I'd rather do my best, keep my heart right, stick my nose in that book and pray. Yes, sir. Amen. And trust. And do what I'm supposed to do. That's the shortest route to relieve your affliction. Now, there's sometimes God's going to send problems to your life just to get your attention. Right. Can I be honest? There's times we become ungrateful and unthankful. And we begin to take things for granted that God does and God protects us from. Right. There's going to be times where God lets you suffer a little bit just to, just to get you back to being thankful and grateful for all that he does. Right. Listen, you have got to learn to be patient. God is not in, in a hurry. And God is not. You know what it reminds me of? And I've used this illustration a ton. It reminds me of a little baby. <coughs> when you have a little bitty baby. Uh, it wakes you up in the middle of the night when it's hungry. It starts crying. You get out of bed. You go to the kitchen and start cooking. The, you start warming the milk and, and preparing everything and getting everything done. And that baby continues to cry. Yeah. And it cries and it cries and it cries. And you know what you're saying? Hold on. The answer's on its way. Calm down. Stop flipping out. I'm working on it. If you'll just be patient, if you'll just relax, I know you've got a problem. I'm trying to fix it. But you know what? That baby continues to cry and squall and carry on. You know when it finally hushes? When you take the bottle and stick it in its mouth. Right. 
And brother, a lot of times we're like little bitty babies. God heard your cry. And to continue to molly grub, grab and bellyache and kick the dirt and put your lip out and walk around uh, like, you, like your mother-in-law moved in uh, is not the right testimony. Trust and believe that he will deliver when he gets ready. And until then, you can mully grub, grab, and bellyache, uh, but God's still not going to deliver you until you learn the lesson that he has for you. Amen. You've got to learn to be patient. You can't panic. But number three, the third problem you're going to run into quickly is the problem of prayer. And what I mean by that is this. When affliction first comes, we will run to the Lord and say, Lord, I've got a problem. Lord, I need some help. Lord, I, I, you see what's going on? Lord, fix my problem. And we don't have no problem praying about it for three or four days. That's easy. But after three or four days, you know what we have a tendency to do? We have a tendency to get bitter. We have a tendency to get angry. Amen. We have a tendency to get discouraged. You know what we do? We quit praying. Listen to me. That's exactly what you need. You say, I don't feel like praying, but that's exactly what you need to do. When it's hardest to pray, pray the hardest. And listen, brother, if you're not careful, you will become discouraged and disillusioned. And brother, you will decide, well, I just, I'm so discouraged I can't pray. No, that's when you need to pray. Right. Listen, brother, uh, you, you're going to face that, that struggle of, of forcing yourself to go pray. You, that's the answer to your problem is prayer. Right. You don't need a loan. You don't need a marriage counselor. You need to go pray. You don't need uh, 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 any, other, any other remedy other than to go pray. If you get help during your affliction, you will find that help through prayer and prayer alone. And so this morning, don't get discouraged. Don't get frustrated. Don't get ill and mad at the Lord. Don't get disgruntled. Don't, get, don't allow the devil to twist up your thinking and get you to the place where you won't pray. Yeah, Let me tell you why. The less you pray, the longer you'll be there. Yeah. See, the very thing that will bring us out is the very last thing we want to do. Right. Can I be honest? I don't always feel like praying. Right. That's right. I don't always, I don't always want to go to my prayer closet. But you know what I've learned to do? I've learned to ignore what I think, what I feel, and go pray because I know it's right and I know He has the answer. And if I find help and if I find comfort and if I find relief during my difficulty, I will find it on my face before my God. He is the one who will comfort and bless and help and deliver me. If I find help, it'll be through Him. Amen. Here's what we'd rather do. We'd rather complain about it to everybody we know than go pray about it. Right. That's good. We'd rather pick up a phone, call everybody, and pour our heart out to them, and then ask them to pray for us. Yeah. And we won't even pray for ourselves. Yeah. That's good. You better be careful when facing affliction that you continue to pray. Lastly, the fourth problem you want to run into when you the fourth problem of having problems is you'll have to deal with the promoter of problems. And what I mean is this, the devil. When we struggle, the devil will put all sorts of crazy nonsense in your head. Do you realize every thought that you think is not the Lord? Right. Do you realize that the devil will jump on you and he'll say this, yes, the Lord's delivered you in the past, but this time is different. He'll say things like, you're never coming out. You're never going to get through this. God's never going to answer you. You've prayed and God ain't answered. And, and he will try his best to discourage you. He will try his best to get you to quit. The devil will say, well, you're having all these problems. You don't need to go to church. You just need to stay home. No, this is the place you need to be. Right. This is where you need to be when you're facing problems. Listen, has anybody ever had the devil tell them that? Well, you know, you're having all these problems. You just need to stay home. Yeah. Yeah. You realize this is where you need to be. Yeah. But you're going to have to fight the rotten, stinking, sorry, good-for-nothing devil uh, 
uh, jumping on your shoulder and trying to convince you of things that are not true. He's going to try to convince you that they are. Right. I don't know about you, but he ever, did the devil ever jump on you and say this? Well, if God loves you, why do you let this happen? Yep, right. Yep. Yep. He let it happen because he does love me. He's trying to make you better. Amen. You ever had him jump on you to jump on you and say this problem will never get fixed? Yeah. You ever had him say to you that, well, you might as well quit praying. There's no use. Yeah. You've prayed and God ain't done it. God ain't going to fool with you. God's not listening. God's done with you. Yeah. Amen. That is the devil. You're going to have to contend with that sucker. And the only way to keep him out of your head, the only way to keep from getting discouraged and falling for the lies of the devil is to fill your mind with this book. Amen. Amen. But if you don't fill your mind with this book pretty soon, if you listen to the devil long enough, he'll start making sense. Right. That's right. He'll convince you and you will end up doing something foolish and something stupid because you listen to the devil. Right. This morning, the problem with problems. Our problem is not our problem. Our problem is our response to the problem. Amen. I'll say this again. I have done every one of those things. I have panicked. Yeah. I have been impatient. I have grown discouraged and quit praying. I have listened to the devil, the promoter of my problem. I have allowed the devil to find space in my head, rent free, and listen to him. I like what old Maze Jackson said. said, one day I was riding down the road and the devil jumped on my shoulder, began to talk to me. He said, I pulled over and opened the pastor door and said, get out. Nobody rides for free. You ain't even paid for gas. Get out. Stop giving the devil a free ride. That's good. And you'll end up dwelling on it and thinking about it and get yourself all twisted up. Yeah. You will walk the floors at night, won't be able to sleep because the devil's working on you and you've given him place. Yeah. And now you're up all night fretting and worried and scared and nervous and you think, well, what if this happens? Well, what if that happens? Hey, stop listening to the devil. You're going to have problems. That is a fact. But you, you can't avoid them. You don't get to choose whether you have problems or not. However, you do get to choose how you respond. Yeah. You, you said, preacher, why would God send problems? The Bible says this. Tribulation worketh patience. Maybe God's trying to teach you patience. I know this, God's trying to develop mature believers. Amen. God's trying to develop people who won't respond in the flesh every time something don't go their way. God's trying to develop believers that are patient, that are kind, that are gracious, even under persecution, even under affliction. God wants you to mature to the place where you handle it and you can demonstrate the grace of God in your life. Amen. Listen, you don't have to flip out. Every time somebody disagrees with you, Amen. you don't have to flip out. Every time a problem comes up, you right. can control and rule your spirit. That's right. Amen. Amen. You don't have you don't have to respond in the flesh. Right. You don't have to panic. You don't have to be impatient. You don't have to give up your prayer life. You don't have to listen to the devil. You can respond properly in the will of God and be a mature believer. Stop letting your flesh rule you. Can I be honest? I've done it. Yeah. yeah. And when I did it, a week, two weeks, six months go by, and I look back and go, man, I should have done that. Right. That's right. I should have said that. Yeah. I hurt myself more by doing that. It hurts more. That hurts more than the original problem that I had. Right. The problem with problems. Amen. You're going to have them. But you have a choice how you respond. That's right. You have a choice to be kind. You have a choice to not have go off half cocked. You have a choice. But you say, well, it just made me so mad. 
You don't have to respond that way. Calm down. Relax. Rule your spirit. This morning, we ain't shouting the victory. We ain't running aisles, but I'll be honest, if you'll take that advice, it'll help. Right. Amen. The problem. The problem. It's easy, man. It's so easy to just say and do something. Don't. Pray. Amen. Wait. Relax. Don't let the devil put you in a position where you hurt yourself even more. This morning, the problem was problem. Again, my problem is not my problem. My problem is how I respond to my problem. My, my problem is God's problem. Right. That's right. It ain't my job to fix the problem. That's God's job to fix the problem. It's my job to be careful how I respond to the problem. And it's my job to let the Lord be the Lord and me be me and do what I'm supposed to do. Amen. But hear me, you can't have faith and panic at the same time. Amen. Right. If you got faith, you won't panic. If you're panicking, you ain't got no faith. Mm -hmm. There's times it's the will of God you suffer. And, try to, and when you try to get out from underneath that suffering, you are putting yourself outside of the will of God. Yeah. You better be careful how you handle problems. Because you may hurt yourself even, even worse. Amen. So respond with some maturity. Respond with some grace. Respond with prayer. Respond by not listening to the day. This morning as we stand. Father, Lord, I can preach what I preached this morning because me and you both know I've been guilty of all of it. I've panicked, Lord. I've grown, in, I've grown weary and impatient with my problems and tried to fix them myself. Lord, I've grown weary and discouraged and refused to pray. Father, you know there's times I've gotten angry, frustrated with you because... Lord, I didn't understand what you were doing in my life. But Lord, the last several years, Lord, you've dealt with me about how to handle problems. Lord, I don't have to respond in the flesh. I don't have to, to become unfaithful. I don't have to uh, panic or become impatient. Lord, you've taught us through the years to just rest and trust and believe seek and pray and so Father I pray you to help us to handle our problems properly Lord we know we can't avoid problems we know that we're not even trying to but Lord we can handle how we respond to our problems Lord I pray you give us the right mindset the right heart the right spirit that when problems and afflictions and burdens come our way Help us to respond in a fashion that makes you look good. Lord, there's people in here got real problems. They got, they got real issues, financial problems, health problems. Lord, uh, family problems, spiritual problems, lost loved ones. Lord, the list could go on and on and on. But your people this morning are facing real issues and problems. Lord, I pray you help us to respond properly. Help us to respond biblically. Help us to uh, respond scripturally when we have problems. And Father, whatever you do for us, we'll be careful. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. We'll give you honor and glory. Help us to avoid the problems of problems. We'll thank you and praise you, whatever you do. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All hearts and minds clear? Amen.